They call it the granddaddy of the car show circuit. And once you're here, you'll see exactly why. It's where automotive art isn't just on display, it's taken to a serious level. It's kind of like the Super Bowl of the hot rod world. This is where they give out the amber for the year's most beautiful roadster. We're heading into the Grand National Roadster Show. You're coming with us on this edition of Hot Rod TV, coming your way right now. Gentlemen, welcome to the 59th annual Grand National Roadster Show, the granddaddy of them all. The Grand National Roadster Show is an event with a lot of history. For the lowdown, let's check in with veteran attendee Jim Holloway from Mother's Polish. Outstanding cars, fantastic builders. You got the cream of the crop here at this show, and you get to look, get up close and personal with what they've built and get a true appreciation for them that sometimes you can't even get in a magazine. And the big prize here is the Amber, with a top award going to America's most beautiful roadster. To even be picked to be a contender for the AMBR is uh, just an amazing thing. The granddaddy of them all, as it's called, from, uh, it's been around a long time. This event has played host to over half a century of automotive excellence. Grand National Roadster Show is in its uh, 59th year. This trophy represents the best of the best when it comes to the roadsters of the world. Don't be fooled by the title. Roadsters are only a part of this yearly collection of cool. The Grand National Roadster Show is more than just roadsters. It, it is an incredible car show. We've got the finest customs, hot rods, motorcycles. What's the show all about? Prestige, honor, excellence. Excellence. Going back a few years, if you walked around the Grand National Show, you didn't see any muscle cars. I mean, it was primarily a hot rod show. The last several years that I've been out to the Grand National Show, I'm seeing a lot of 60s, 60s and 70s muscle cars. It's amazing to see what some of these guys are doing to a Chevelle or a GTO. It, it, I'm blown away. The Roaster Show's got pretty much something for everybody. There's one hall with rat rods. There's one hall that's predominantly bikes, predominantly street rods. There's a lot of muscle cars here. And of course, you got the cars competing for this award, America's Most Beautiful Roadster, are in this hall, and they're pretty spectacular. There's over a dozen amazing roadsters competing in this invitation-only event. What you're seeing represents decades of passion and craftsmanship, all taken to an incredible level. Let's take a look at the first of many beautiful rides and meet the folks who have made their dreams into rolling works of art. This is a 32 highway. It's called Undisputed. Uh, it's Undisputed Gold, Champagne Gold. Uh, it took us just under five years to make it, to create it. Um, all hand pounded, all steel, no aluminum, no fiberglass, zero. Uh, it's got an LS1 supercharged, Magnuson supercharger. The motor itself puts out about 610 horsepower. Uh, the car can be driven. And when driven, it rolls on a custom wheel and tire combination. Uh, the wheels on the car are machined by Boyd Connington. The front wheels are 20 by 8. The tires are supplied by BF Goodrich. We chose BF Goodrich probably because they're the only company out there that was able to carve the tires for us the way we wanted them. And it worked out great there with BF Goodrich on that route. The front grill insert is a diamond cut grill insert bar made by Lumicraft. This is actually uh, the first time that we've actually competed for the Grand National. It won uh, the Grade 8 at the Detroit Autorama, uh, the Riddler. We got the Grade 8, we got uh, 32 of the show, and Best of Paint at the Riddler, which was a really big deal because it's also the first water-based paint car to ever win a show. The Amber Award for me is the big one for me. This is the one that they're judging just who's got the finest, prettiest, engineered, top to bottom. Just the best of all roadster in the world that's what it is i've been to the show uh, the last four years to come and see what it's about and been excited to bring my car and i'm finally here so for me it's a victory it's already a victory for me coming up we meet rock legend michael anthony 
Rockies checking out the amazing cars at the Grand National Roadster Show here on Hot Rod TV. He's a bass playing legend and an avid car enthusiast. Michael Anthony loves the Grand National Roadster Show. I try to make it every year. Come down as often as I can when I'm not working. Mike had his Roadster in, uh, when it was in San Francisco still, had his Roadster in the show up there. It was there. like 94, 95? 95 or 6, 95 yeah. 95 or 6, yeah. <laughs> like the, the bombs. The 36 has a custom with the sloping fenders and everything. Yeah. It's just... Uh, no, it looks cool the way they swooped it all and the way it all ties into the back. Let's take a closer look at this gem from the Great White North. This is a 1936 Ford Roadster. It's an original Henry Ford body that's been modified severely. We put a 40 Packard grill in it, custom made the hood, custom made the trunk lid, skirts. Three elements were important in building this car. One had to be hot rod, one had to be classic, and one had to be custom. The hot rod part of the, uh, the car is the running gear with the stroker flathead and the four gear. The classic part of it is the interior with the diamond tufted interior, and the custom part of it is the body modifications. There's eight years that have gone into this car. It was painted, it was polished, Wayne Edwards did the interior. Some fantastic people were put together to put this car together, but uh, we got it. I, I think we got it in any case, that's why we're here. It's not everybody there you get an invitation to the Grand National Roadster Show, being from the great right north, coming down to the west coast where this whole thing was born. So for me, it's a real honor. This beautiful custom has some competition right next door. It's a 32 Ford Roadster I've been putting together for the last seven years. The engine's a 383 all aluminum dart engine built by Speed Sports. The body I bought in several panels, assembled it. The wheelbase is stretched to 112. It's got one off suspension, a lot of brackets. And the paint scheme was a cream and a red scallop nose on it. Right after this, I got one more, one more show I got to take it to, and now I'm hitting the streets. Let's go check in with another outstanding Amber contestant. American Canyon, California. I don't even know where that's at. It's where this roadster was built by 23-year-old Robbie Azevedo. It's just like music, man. Younger and younger every year, boy. It's like. <laughs> Sam Brown. Hey, How are you? Good. Yeah, Mike Anthony. How you doing? Good. And what's your name? Robbie. Robbie? Yep. It's your car, huh? Yeah, it's mine. It's cool. So we just. Put this together from pieces that you found in the wrecking yard? Oh, no, what? actually, this one started out as like a high school project. Uh -huh. When I graduated, the teachers had both retired, so they had just left. The project took like four or five years, and then it still wasn't done. And then nobody else wanted to take on the project, so they so sold just, it. Just, oh, OK. And then we got it from them, and it looked completely different. It had full fenders. It had like a Model A chassis under it. And a lot of the stuff wasn't built right. So we changed some of the stuff. We decided we wanted a 32 chassis, so I called the guys at SoCal, and I said, you know, I got this wood body that we don't know really what the dimensions are. It was built to be like a yeah. Model A, kind of. <laughs> and they were like, well, we got three different sizes, so just bring it on down, because we're from the Napa Valley, mm -hmm. and then we'll just try it on all three and just take whatever one fits best. So we did that, and that's how we ended up with the 32 frame. And then I pretty much just went through and redid all the metal work and stuff like that to what it is now. So the only part that's original from like the high school project is still like the wood and the wood doors and everything like that. Oh, okay. Beginning of September, I decided that we were going to finish it for the show. You did a great job yeah, on it. Yeah, it turned, nice. out, it turned out really nice. Coming up, it's the classic known far and wide as a la carte. And it's here at the show in all its glory. Check it out when we return with more Hot Rod TV. Here at the Grand National Roadster Show, rocker Michael Anthony is about to spot a legendary ride. Oh my gosh. 1958 won the Roadster Show back then. I certainly remember a la carte. It was incredible. I mean, it was way before its time. It's called a la carte. And back in 1958, it took the world of car shows by storm. Built by the great George Barris, a la carte was in a class by itself. Well, I, I can't use a psychedelic expression, but it was way out. It was wild. It was flipped. I think flip would be the way to be the adjective for it. The thing's flipped. Originally built by a legend, now rebuilt by the great Roy Brizio. 
At the time this car was done, I mean, there was nothing else like it. It was something very special, and here it is 50 years later, it's still very special. This is the Alicart, which was a uh, show car built in the 50s, and it uh, was built by George Barris, originally owned by Richard Peters. He commissioned George to build the car, and it was first shown here at the Grand National Roadster Show in 1958. It won the Roadster Show that year, world's most beautiful roadster. And the following year, in 1959, it came back again, and it won again. Back in those days, the rule was that a car could only be shown twice. Now, for this 59th annual Roadster Show, a la carte has been perfectly restored. I did uh, the restoration, paint work, and body work on the, the a la carte uh, for this year. Mickey Galloway did a lot of the metal work on it, so uh, it was fun. And Roy Brizio did the, the chassis and the final finals on it. It's a 1928 Model A Ford Roadster pickup and uh, highly modified, as you can see. The grill's been changed, it's got a custom hood. All the fenders have been modified. The pickup bed's handmade. The rear section of the body is from a 26 Model T. Um, so there's nothing really that's uh, much of a 28 Roadster pickup anymore except for the front half of the cab. And this thing pushed even, the envelope back then? I know, even today looking under it, it's like, you know, you can see all the stuff that they did in 1958. Uh, you always remember the a la carte. Yeah, she's a two-time winner, so this famous hot rod had better look out. Wild Bill's 32 Ford Roadster. This car is uh, its a Brookville body. It's uh, been heavily modified. We've bobbed uh, six inches off the back, hand-built the uh, hinges, the hood's hand-built. Of course, the big Hemi uh, 426 Keith Black motor. The motor, I'm not sure what the horsepower is. We're estimating between uh, 800 and 900 horse uh, very easily. The interior, we've used an accent of our uh, uh, of brass trim that we've had chrome, but the, the trick is, is we used uh, a gentleman by the name of G.L. Jones. He does uh, restoration on vintage guns. He's one of the last guys on the planet to actually use a chisel and a hammer to go through an engrave, trying to get that uh, gun feel to it, the old western gun feel. Nearby, Jim Holloway from Mother's Polish is catching up with both old friends and cool cars. Hey, honey. Hey, sweetheart. How, How are, are you? Good. Good. Good to see you. Good. We saw you hanging around. I didn't know you were going to be here. Let me tell you. We're showing this car this year. Oh, this one's yours? No, but well, we're showing it. Oh, you are? This is a 1932 Ford, and this car started life as a flat pallet of metal. The concept had been in the works for a couple years, and then when they decided to go with the car, I think it was about an 18-month build. The car is truly a unique piece because the sheet metal work on this car, even though it's a 32, the front end, if you notice, is made to resemble a 1940 model Ford. The color of the car is Aztec gold, it is powered by a TC4 late model Chevrolet fuel injected motor. Everything on the car is hand fabricated, handmade, engineered, designed, and it is basically a rebirth of the 32 Ford with the 1940 model accents to it. People are very fascinated because they have never seen this marriage of a 32 and a 40. And there's a tremendous amount of subtleties to this car. So as people walk around, they think they see something, and then they stand around and they see something else. And it's just a slow process to watch them walk around the car and appreciate all the subtleties in the car. Coming up, we're going to check out a speed-inspired Roadster as the judges do what they do best. Also, we'll meet some car fans with some great ideas, like my good friend here. Kid, tell them what to do. Stay tuned and watch more Hot Rod TV. Welcome back to Hot Rod TV at the home of the Amber, the Grand National Roadster Show. There are cars here with plenty of beauty, but every now and then, you run into one that clearly has a passion for horsepower as well. This is a uh, mid-century in motorsports inspired 32 Ford. Everybody looks at it and they go, uh, it looks familiar, but I've never seen anything like it. So the seats are Porsche 356 GT from the mid 50s. It's got a Ferrari Daytona wood grain steering wheel. Got a early Corvette shifter. Triumph TR3 dashboard, uh, Brooklyn's aeroscreen, so the, one of the obvious features, and then of course uh, aluminum fairing 
which uh, is a common motorsports item. You know, this car was never really built for this kind of show. They're looking for anything that's wrong with the car. So paint chips and screws turned the wrong way or some rust dripping out of a crack, you know, is, uh, is detrimental. This car probably has way too many of those. This car was uh, built to be more of a driver car. So it may not be what they're looking for. We're just, we're just happy to be here. It takes an entire team of judges an incredible amount of time to look at these cars. And you can bet they're looking for more than just chip paint. The Amber, what we do is on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, we have two groups of four guys. Uh, they go out, they, they look them over, they judge them, they look at them. It takes pretty much half the day to do that. And then they turn their judging sheets in, we see what their scores were, how they came back, and then we sit down and we talk about it. Everything, you know, paint, what it looks like, overall appearances, the interiors, engine, how the installation is, wiring. It's, it's the whole car. It's not just one piece or another piece. It's the whole entire car. Just looking for chips and scratches and where they bolt the stuff down, make sure they don't scratch the paint and stuff like that. Make sure everything works right and put together right, everything lines up. You know, a lot of times stripes and stuff doesn't line up, so you catch that stuff. The only thing we look for in any car is never personal preference. We look for quality uh, and finish. It doesn't have to be a color you like that has nothing to do with it. It just has to be done really well. We want to make sure that it all fits together. The fenders all fit well, the, you know, adds to the chassis and that type of thing. By the looks of these cars, you'd think they couldn't even pull out of the driveway. Well, they could get. In the AMBR, you do have to you do have to run, or you can't be in the AMBR. When they come in, you have to start them, and uh, you have to go forward, backwards. And for proof of that, check out this beauty. This car is awesome. It's traditional. It's got a lot of innovation in it. This car is getting a lot of attention. Oh, well, this is the uh, SR392. It started off as a 27 Ford, a body by Shadow Rods that I manufacture at Quality Metalcraft, and, and then we kind of morphed it into uh, kind of like a maybe a Lakes Modified or a Salt Flats long and low street rod. The boys from Mopar and supplied us a uh, brand new 6.1 liter. Uh, crate engine. This car has a lot of style, but also a lot of competition. Just outstanding car, and from what I understand, they built it in nine weeks, which is even more amazing. And we're just about to find out if nine weeks did the trick. Yeah, well, we are minutes away from the uh, the judging, and uh, I, I'm like I said, I'm just glad to be here. Coming up, it's the moment of truth. Which ride will be America's most beautiful roadster? You'll find out when we return with more Hot Rod TV. At the Grand National Roadster Show, they're about to choose America's most beautiful roadster. The award represents the great element shaping this event. More than a year's worth of work goes into any one of these cars to get to the state of the art that they are today. The winner is about to find himself in the company of some famous and respected names in the world of show cars. Let's look at just a few who made the list. Uh, there are some great names on this plaque. Bill Niekamp is on this plaque. Um, Richard Peters, who um, was the owner of the a la carte, which the car's here today as well, 50 years ago, was the first two-time winner of this trophy. Uh, there's names like Boyd Coddington, Chip Foose have built cars on this. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of history on this trophy. And joining that impressive history will be this year's hard-working winner, a name that is about to be called out. Without further ado, I will give you some hints. The car does not have a top on it anyway. The car is a Ford. 
The car is a 1932. America's most beautiful roadster, Rudy Nekachia. From Sherman Oaks, California, Rudy picking up America's most beautiful roadster award as the celebration begins. Justin, thank you so much. My crew, Terry, Rob, my family, everybody, thank you. Thank you for supporting me. Everybody will always remember the gold 32 Ford of Rudy Nekachia. Thank you, thank you. Alan Palmer, Justin Patfield, all of you, thank you so much. Thank you. It is a dream come true for Rudy, someone who knows that it takes the right team to build America's most beautiful roadster a car putting him in the winner's circle at this prestigious event. I don't even know. I don't even know. I just, I don't know what to say. It's just, it's, 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 it's just, it's such a dream. It's a dream. It finally came true. It finally came true. This is the show I wanted. This is the one I wanted. The baddest 32 this world will ever see. And this is also a big win for builder Justin Padfield, an artist who's worked hard for this victory. Well, it's nice and it's a team effort. We got the guys in the shop, Justin, Alan. Justin Padfield, I know. Never gonna forget him. He's always gonna be a part of my family now. Always. Always. It's all worth it now. Absolutely. It's a dream. It came true. It came true. It finally came true. It's been a long road. It's been a long road. Party time. <laughs> <laughs> a great car, the top prize. It doesn't get a lot better than this. So Rudy, congratulations from all of us here at Hot Rod TV.